Hey, welcome. This is a uh, chemcast by Jay Houston. My goal today is to talk to you a little bit about molecular origami. And essentially, one of the goals of something we're trying to do here is that uh, it's one thing to see a molecule on paper, but with this process, you're going to be able to have a series of models that will take what you see on paper and provide a three-dimensional structure that you can actually have in your hands and take home with you and then try to figure out how that's going to play out on a larger scale. Okay, so first of all, to do this, uh, one of the things that always helps is if you have a series of instructions. And uh, the instructions should look like this. Okay, so it says ChemFast, uh, or it says ChemFax by Flint Scientific. Uh, and I found that uh, it works very well, but it's really not that hard after you've done one or two. So uh, eventually you're going to start off with a piece of paper, colored paper, that uh, looks like this. And there's a couple of features I want to point out. First of all, if you can notice these numbers, after you're done folding, these numbers are all going to line up. So this is 1 and 1, 3 and 3, 2 and 2. Second, the red right here that you see, these are all atoms that are bonded to the central atom. Uh, the black also represents an atom, and that could be also an electron cloud, and we'll, or an electron pair, and we'll talk about those. Uh, any place you see a solid line with the yellow, that means it's a mountain fold, we'll talk about that. The gray is gonna get folded back, and this uh, part right here, this dotted line, uh, that's going to be a valley fold, and we'll do it so we don't see the gray. So one of the first things that you're gonna need to do uh, as we do this is make sure you have all your papers and some scissors and some tape and we essentially want to um, take this and to be able to cut this out. So here's a little demonstration. I basically cut it out. I can see where the numbers line up with each other um, and if I pull this up here uh, I start doing my folds. Again the solid lines look like a mountain fold. By mountain the paper is going away from me and if you look at it edge on, it looks like almost like a mountain. So I mean, you can really do this any way you want. You should get the same product, but at the end, um, you know, I found this to be the easiest way. Now, the next part then, which is a little tricky, are these valley folds, right? You can see how I've kind of folded the dashed lines down. Um, so we have those going on. And then you fold it over with the gray part back, and sometimes people want to tape those back and all of a sudden you get what looks like a three-dimensional model. Okay, And uh, it's a little confusing sometimes if you're not sure what you're looking at. But one of the things that we're going to find out is that um, the uh, it really these will really be nice as we show the paper model uh, with the um, what is written on a piece of paper. Okay, so here's what we end up getting. And again, Adam atom, atom, central atom, these are the bond, and usually we'll need a little bit more information to figure out that these might be uh, a, an electron pair. Okay, now, probably one of the most important things with this is this slide right here, and I know this might be cut off on the side here, but uh, I just want to take a time to really stress this. Uh, there are three questions, three writing questions that we're trying to develop that you have to prove to me. Can you, for any compound molecule on paper, draw what's called a Lewis dot structure? And to do that, you're going to need a series of rules so you're consistent and logical uh, in the way you come up with some reasonable structure, given what we know, uh, the, the data that were presented about electronegativity and valence shell electrons. The second question, and this is huge, uh, can you figure out, once you have that Lewis structure, a three-dimensional structure, which is what these models are for? Then the third one, which I'm most excited about, is can you uh, figure out, once you have that three-dimensional structure, if you know about the symmetry and electronegativity, can you then begin to uh, figure out and decide, okay, how is this going to react and behave and what are the properties on a, on a large scale? Uh, and when you can start to go through all those steps and say, here's the structure, What's the function like? That is some pretty amazing science. Uh, you should be able to do that on the high school level, and I think you know there are people doing that on a large level as well. But that's really better. What I call better learning through chemistry.
So, question is, can you prove it to me? That's what you have to do now. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to help.